Welcome to the Firebox. I'm Jared Cordova, your host for the evening, here with my co-host Megan Malco Morgan, uh, and we have a special guest here uh, with us today. Uh, we will be introducing shortly. Uh, but before we get to that, we're going to start with uh, a little bit of an explanation of uh, what we're doing here with this podcast uh, at Hub City News that we call the Firebox. Uh, the uh, podcast uh, is an effort on our part to uh, amplify voices in the community to be sure that uh, everybody has a say, uh, and uh, we are welcoming a variety of guests to the show uh, so that we have an opportunity to ask questions, get answers, uh, and talk to the uh, members of the community who have influence uh, and power. Yeah, and the good thing about a podcast is it's a conversation. So for those of you who listen to podcasts regularly, you know that this isn't about so much a staged, uh, you know, this is the script and you read from it. Um, we want to do it more in terms of a conversation piece, um, So, it, which is why we have wine. Um, and we always have a special guest who comes in and talks to us about things going on in Berlin, local politics, ideas, thoughts, opinions, whatever. So uh, we're really excited to get this started, and we have a super special guest today. That's right. So uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, strap in and uh, help us welcome our first guest, to the firebox, uh, Belen Mayor Robert Nobler. Applause, 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 applause. 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 <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. How you Welcome. Doing? We're okay. we're excited to have you. Thanks. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely, and uh, you know, as uh, as folks in the the community may recognize, uh, you know, obviously, Hub City News is not. Uh, go easy on this guy, uh, and uh, I really do appreciate you being here today, that you're willing to sit down, have a conversation, uh, and I think that uh, what's important for folks to recognize at all times is that uh, we're all here for the betterment of the community and, and to you know get those, uh, those forward-moving uh, progress, projects, uh, all of the things that we need here in this community that'll just make it a better place for folks to live. Absolutely. I agree. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Thanks for having me. So to get started, um, you know, obviously you have uh, been in office now for uh, almost a couple of years, just, uh, you know, three months shy, I guess, at the end of the year. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, uh, the, and I think this is true of, of anybody who comes into public office, any position uh, whatsoever. I mean, heck, it could be a new job. There's a lot of uh, adjustment that takes place mm -hmm. when you're first getting started. Uh, and there's a lot of learning to do. Um, and so I'm kind of curious to, to hear a little bit from you about uh, how your experience has been in, in the first couple of years uh, in office, uh, things that maybe you uh, didn't expect that you've learned, um, and uh, just how things are going for the city of Berlin. You know, I, I, uh, I thoroughly enjoy being mayor. I do. Do you? There are frustrations that, that go along with, I think, any elected uh, position. Um, and really, this first two years, has been spent learning the, the, the workings of city government, you know, all the departments, how things uh, transpire between a governing body, a mayor, and a council, and how that's then translated to the city manager to put into action, um, and then the respective department to make it happen. And this incredibly slow process we call government uh, has been uh, the biggest frustration because we all have things that, that we want to see done, that we want to see changed uh, for the better, and you begin to make those decisions and you try to find the funding or the funding's not available, the funding is available, maybe we'll get it next legislative session, maybe we won't. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's been a learning curve for two years of really how it all works, how it all comes together. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we've had during that two year time, you know, some transition in, in, uh, in city managers and fire chiefs. So you have to try to adapt to maybe the way that they wish to do things and, and kind of make this all work to, to better Berlin. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, when uh, you had the luxury, as, as I did as well, to get an introduction to government by starting on the city council. And when you're on the city council, you are a policymaker in large part. Uh, it's your job to go to council meetings, uh, informed on the issues that are coming before the council, but largely to say yes or no. Um, ask good questions, hopefully, if you're well prepared, um, and uh, generally set 
the policies of the city of Glen, whether that be laws, certain approaches with projects or programs. Um, if you want to, as a city councilor, you can wade into issues a little bit more than that, but that's your general charge as a city councilor. When you're mayor, you do it all. You do 100% of everything all day, every day. You rely upon your staff, your city manager in particular, to make sure uh, that the city's daily operations are running the way that they need to. And it's a much different experience because everything rolls right to you, regardless of good, bad, or in between. Mm -hmm. Now, And so uh, have you seen a difference between your time on the city council and your time now as mayor? Very much so, very much so. I, I think uh, on council, uh, to me, though, on council was often you were in the hot seat more because you were going to be making that decision. You know, the mayor, for, for the public's knowledge, doesn't vote unless there's a tie. And um, that was a tough place to be at times, especially when, when maybe the council wasn't going to agree on an issue. Um, being mayor, yes, 16 departments to... <laughs> Think about you know what's happening today with PD um, when there's a major a major issue with with you know an accident, police, fire, um, flooding. All of these things really are on the way to your shoulders as mayor and wanting to do ultimately what's what's best for everyone. And you just you, you can do your best, mm -hmm. but can you always do the best? I'm not sure you can. It's it, it's virtually impossible to. It is impossible to satisfy everyone in town, Absolutely. but you always just do your best. But big difference, a mm -hmm. lot more responsibility, a uh, lot more behind the scenes mm -hmm. than than uh, a member of the council. Absolutely. Yeah, what I appreciate in a great deal is that, you know, it's nonpartisan mm -hmm. when we get at this level of government. And so, you know, in, in partisan office, folks are always playing to that, you know, 50% plus one, mm -hmm. because that's all they need in order to get back in office later on. But when it's nonpartisan, you have to deal with everybody and you got to deal with them equally at all times. And you're working for 100% of the people. Uh, and I think that that's, a, that's an awesome approach because uh, you can get a lot done if you're serious about taking care of all the people mm -hmm. all the time instead of making sides and playing partisan yeah. games. Yeah. Yeah, I would just like to interject in case there's somebody watching who doesn't actually know that you are the former mayor and the current mayor of the lead. <laughs> uh, and, you know, you could just be new to this. Um, but what I find really interesting um, about um, politics in a, a small town is that there's always these perceived ideas of like who you're supposed to be friends with, who you're not supposed to be friends with, who you're supposed to like, who you're not supposed to like. Um, if you argue at all, then you must hate each other, which is uh, my favorite perceived idea. So I find it really fascinating and I feel lucky um, that I know you both, but also that I feel that we have, um, what people don't know is that we've been close friends for about like 15 years um, within the community, being city councilor, being mayor, being not city councilor, wanting a crematory, being city councilor, being mayor. So these, all these things. Um, and what I see about that that's really important for people to know is that it has like, the idea is always, we live in this town and we want, we know we want what's best for this town. Right. So to kind of like lighten the mood, I have a question for both of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is, what is your, what was your favorite thing about being mayor? Oh man. And then what is your favorite thing about being mayor? Oh, uh, that's a very good question. And um, it's actually a really stark moment for me. And it, it happened several times while I was mayor and it happened primarily while I was campaigning for office, city council mayor otherwise, but then, um, you know, sometimes when I was just doing my, uh, my walk through a neighborhood or I was driving around, um, I would get to stop uh, and talk to an individual constituent in a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And there were so many people in this town who were so kind, even with the tenor of politics sometimes, who would invite me into their house or invite me you know, to the kitchen table or uh, would sit with me on their porch. And we would have a conversation about the land. And I learned so much about what was important to people, what the issues were that folks were concerned about. Uh, and sometimes, you know, I got, I got to share a good meal with them at that table in that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it, was, it was very personal. Um, 
but it made you uh, connect with constituents in a way that, you know, I don't think you get to do if you're mayor of Albuquerque or you're president of the United States. You don't get to just walk around and talk to folks uh, in any neighborhood uh, the way that you do in a small town. And so that was really special to me, but it also helped me shape how I was a mayor. Yeah. You know, I think my favorite times are the times when we have these, these great events in Berlin when, uh, when we're providing events or organizations are providing mm-hmm. events, they're free to the community, you see the community out, dancing, having a good time, indifferent of politics, indifferent of the social media banter. Uh, and, and you do get those that will come up to you and say, the land really looks great, thanks for what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Or this happened and I dealt with one of your city employees and uh, it was a positive experience, thank you. So. It's, you know, because quite honestly, this, this can be very um, difficult, you know, mm-hmm. it, especially if you choose to, to sit at home and follow social media and get on pages that, do want, that want to do nothing but, but maybe slam the city mm-hmm. of Belen or the mayor, the council, or what's our fault, what's not our fault. Uh, it can be very frustrating. It's very heavy to carry that uh, oftentimes. Mm-hmm. But when we're in public, when we're at an event, and everyone's just having a good time, and we're just being Berlin, and we're just mm-hmm. having fun. To me, those are the, the moments that make it worth it. Yeah. Those are my favorite moments when we're together as a community. Right, yeah. Those are the moments that make a community, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I can see that too. And, you know, it, uh, it it's kind of interesting because I feel like there's, like you're saying, there's sort of like an online reality that probably isn't reality. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, and then there's real like Mm -hmm. us sitting down right now and having a conversation a conversation that is much different i imagine than what we sometimes see and and we um we talk about this quite frequently because there are you know there's hub city news but there's also good stuff about belen and there's all these pages and and sometimes it's very community oriented and it's very helpful to the community and other times it it goes to a little bit of an extreme where it's not. And so I'm kind of interested in hearing a little more about like that experience because I know that for me at least as mayor, it got more and more challenging the longer I was in office. Uh, People, and I'm sure you see this too, they would kind of communicate with you from every direction, you know, Facebook tags and Twitter tags and all these different ways in which they would try to get my attention, sometimes try to get my attention because they wanted to get a rise out of me. And um, at some point, it's obviously not productive for the community or for government. Mm-hmm. And one of the most frustrating things, you know, to take the opposite end of this question, mm-hmm. and one of the most frustrating things for me has been really trying to educate the public mm-hmm. into it, to learn our process. Well, we want to hear your concerns. You know, we want you to show up at a council meeting during public comment and, and really chew our butts for three minutes mm-hmm. if that's what it takes to get a point across about how something is affecting you or how mad you are about something we've done or that pothole has screwed up your car alignment again. Yeah. We want to know about it. But the Facebook medium is not the place we look for it. Mm-hmm. And that's been the most frustrating is uh, when I was first elected as mayor, I spent a lot of time trying to respond to everything that I was tagged in on mm-hmm. social media mm-hmm. because I felt like, oh my gosh, if I don't give an answer, I look ineffective or they mm-hmm. just think I don't care. Right. What I learned very quickly in a matter of months, let's say, <laughs> was that that's completely wrong and that will drive you stir crazy. Mm-hmm. And and sometimes the best answer is to message them privately and say, I'm not gonna address this on a public forum. Here's where you need to go with this or if I can help you, here's what I would recommend. Mm-hmm. Uh, but to just constantly engage, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's overwhelming in today's age. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, go to the City of Belen website and use the report a problem link where they have a form and you can report your problems there, mm-hmm. which you is know, the appropriate know, way to do it. The best thing, I think, one of the best things the city's done mm-hmm. has been report a problem. And often when people will call me and they have a problem, mm-hmm. I don't tell everyone this public, I'll tell you. <laughs> um, the way that I generally handle your problem is getting on the City of Belen website, report a problem, and reporting the problem to the appropriate department. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's been a really effective tool mm-hmm. for all the departments to manage what they have going on in the day to day. Absolutely, absolutely. So to, to pivot a little bit, obviously we have a city council race underway right now. Right. The, uh, you know, this, the 
race is uh, four candidates. Uh, we had some others who kind of jumped in, jumped out of the race, but we ended up with four mm -hmm. folks who are running for the office right now. Uh, and uh, I want to get your impressions uh, of the race, you know, candidates specifically, if you want to talk specific to candidates. But at the very least, I'm, you know, I'm curious to hear what you want to see in a city council candidate uh, for the city of Berlin. You know, when I look back at uh, where we've been over the past year, back in January, we had a vacancy, of course, uh, on the city council. Uh, three of the four folks running today were a part of that process and trying to be appointed to that seat, and one was selected. And so uh, where do you stand today on the city council race? City council race. Number one, I commend all of them because I've been there, and, and it's tough. It's tough, uh, and you're at kind of this midterm point where you've really got to convince people to get out and vote, so please get out and vote. Mm -hmm. I don't know when this is going to be live, but get out and vote. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so important that you have a say in, in, in who's who's handling your, your city. Yeah. And, you know, I, I honestly feel that out of the four candidates, I can, uh, I'll respect uh, the constituents and who they choose. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel I can work well with whichever two mm -hmm. are selected to be there, whichever two are voted in. Um, Lawrence Padilla, I think, is um, a very intelligent uh, man, I, I, from what I know, I don't know him extremely well. Mm -hmm. I know he's also, you know, comes from a family history of of people that have been very involved in Berlin. From his from his father, many many years at the wastewater plant. His his sister, of course, Yvette, who passed away during her term as city councilwoman. But prior to that, many years with the municipal court and and the library, and uh, even driving the RSVP bus. Sure. Um, so he comes from a, a lineage of people that want to do for Berlin. Mm -hmm. And uh, Councilor Miho, uh, Tracy, uh, she was appointed to fill Councilor Padilla's seat, and Councilor Padilla, when that seat was vacated by her passing, uh, stepped up because she wanted to do better for Berlin. And I think that's what you see across this slate. They all want to do better for Berlin. Um, Rudy Espinosa has. Uh, you know, in our town, has done so much in his, you know, alongside his wife, but they've done a lot for our town. You, Rudy's done, he's got a great position with Wells Fargo. He oversees like 400 locations and security and the things that go, go on there. Uh, former military, former police officer, so it can bring a lot to the table, um, maybe in the aspect of crime or how we can get more creative with, with fighting crime in Belen or what we can do better in our police department. And, uh, and Deb Gabaldon has served a long tenure in her career as the city and has probably seen and heard lots of things, good and bad, mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure has learned from what she's absorbed and, you know, has ways that she thinks she can make it better. So they all bring something. The goal is they all want to do better for Berlin, right? Mm -hmm. um, I have, uh, I did a Facebook post that uh, that I wouldn't publicly endorse my favorites or my favorite or favorite three or top two. But I did extend the invitation to all four candidates and it still stands that, you know, as they're campaigning, if I can be a resource to answer questions, if I can help them find the answer to a constituent's particular question, you know, I'm glad to do it. Mm -hmm. um, to date, I have only sat down and actually um, Rudy Espinosa did call me and want to sit down and talk about probably many of the things we're going to discuss today, mm -hmm. you know, ongoing issues, things that we're doing, ongoing projects. Mm -hmm. But the but the invitation is extended to all of them. Absolutely. Um, do you think this is where I get I'm gonna get a little hard hitting for you? Don't you think you need to do a little more than just uh, want better for Berlin? So what I see in this campaign um, season is a total lackluster of enthusiasm. I see um, four candidates who kind of campaign, um, and as somebody who, you campaigned for mayor and for city council, and I've been working on campaigns my entire career, I don't feel invigorated to vote for any of them. Mm. Um, I mean, I see, I will say, like I've seen Lawrence, Lawrence has been the only one who like, I can like spot places who, you know, makes an effort to come talk to you. Rudy is there, but to me, he's not there any more than he already is. Um, because he's someone who's already in the community, but I don't see him like actively campaigning. I, I know from Facebook po posts, he's been knocking on a few doors. 
I don't see any flyers. I don't see any chatter. When I talk about who's running for city council, I don't hear any excitement. So I know I feel like that passion for Berlin. You know, you want to make Berlin better. Everybody in Berlin wants it to be better. If you're a citizen here, you want it to be better. But what's the motivation to make it better? Um, that's something that I see is not within these candidates, mm -hmm. not because they don't want it, but because they're really not fighting for it. Like, it seems very, like, nonchalant, like, you'll all be good, <laughs> right? Like, sure. we know that's not campaigning. That's not. Right. You're all going to get a trophy. That's not how it works. So where's the fight? I, I want to see a fight. And you know I love to fight. So where's the fight? So I'll fight with you for a second. <laughs> you know, a couple of things. A couple of things. Again, these midterm elections generally, to me, don't seem to generate the same type of excitement when we don't have a governor who's mm -hmm. running president, something major happening mm -hmm. that people are really um, involved in or, or drawn into politically. So that's tough. I, I will say I, I kind of feel like, for example, my run for mayor was during COVID. We had to get creative with campaigning. Mm -hmm. uh, we couldn't go knocking door to door right. because nobody wanted you near them. And uh, so creativity then meant making the biggest spectacle you could of yourself in a parade if they were allowed and they had them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, bright signs, um, phone calls, mm -hmm. um, and just, yeah, and social media. I haven't seen as much from any of the candidates mm -hmm. that I'd like to see on social mm -hmm. media, even, even a simple boost of a, an yes. ad or a thought. Um, so I'm not going to disagree with you at all. I'm not going to disagree with you. Um, I, but I'm also not going to say that one is doing better than the other you know, yeah. in this in this race. Mm -hmm. yeah. I still stand by the fact that I, I feel as though I can work um, can work with any of them. Mm -hmm. You know, based on the two that I that, that are currently there, you'll have to. <laughs> you have. <laughs> no, I have to say this. My, from what from what I do know from the four, uh -huh. uh, if that intention is is genuine to do what's best for the land, mm -hmm. and that's our goal as a as a governing body as a whole, then okay. I mean, we, we have this shift, uh, and and we continue forward. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with that too. I'd like to see more from the candidates. It's, uh, it's well past time, you know, we've got uh, it's just a few weeks left of the uh, election of, of the race. And um, gosh, I, yeah, honestly, other than Tracy Armijo, um, I don't know what they stand for. Uh, and I want to know what they stand for. And I think you're right. It can't just be as generic as I want better for Belen because everybody does. Mm -hmm. We need to know what your issues are, what you're going to focus on. You know, are, you, are there particular projects you're going to work on, programs that you want to put forward? How do you view the condition of the city and what areas of the city need more attention and how are you going to work toward that? I think in the past we've had candidates who have stood very strong for issues. I could look back at a variety of candidates. You know, Wayne Gallegos, he was always mm -hmm. flood control. You knew he was going to stand up mm -hmm. for that. Frank Ortega was always going to be veterans and veteran mm -hmm. memorial. You knew that. I don't know what these candidates represent. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and that's a fair, that is a fair statement. And, and uh, Tuesday night's forum, Tuesday, 6 p.m., uh, you know, maybe we'll hear more about their platforms. Mm -hmm. Of course, it doesn't give a lot of opportunity for, for debate. Right. Uh, more of a Q&A type situation, but hopefully we'll learn a bit more. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I agree. It's not all about what's better for Belen. I would like to hear from some of the candidates, the candidates what they don't like that I'm doing. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, because again, mm -hmm. we're going to have two there. Mm -hmm. um, what is it that they don't like about the mayor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's that they'd like to, to try differently that I can institute in, in, in the way, even that we run a meeting or something? Yeah. You know, what's the, what's the opinion? Mm -hmm. Haven't heard it. We, we don't want Stepford wife candidates. That's so right. That's right. I mean, I, I think that is what we kind of have. This I feel like people are in this kind of mode where they're afraid to say what they stand for. So they hold back a little bit because they because there's been so much backlash in the past mm -hmm. four years, two years of city councilors. Um, like Councillor Bernal, who says something, and every time he says something, it doesn't matter if you agree with it or you disagree with it, somebody's going to attack it, right? Um, and he's been very bold in his statements. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that there's this like move of like, let's just not say anything till we get in. And I, I think that that um, 
I don't think that's the way to run a city. I just, I think that it's the boldness that makes the people want more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think something, you know, maybe to address since you, since you brought up Councillor Bernal is I think it's, um, it's unfortunate that he's decided to, to move on from council. And it's unfortunate because although his ideas maybe weren't ever, I don't know, accepted by the majority of the council, they weren't bad ideas. They were just different approaches. Um, and, you know, with, with three more Bernals on our council or two more Bernals mm-hmm. and maybe a mayor that, you know, has those same ideals, yeah. things would be going a different direction perhaps. Mm-hmm. Um, so... It's unfortunate that uh, whether it's the governing body or uh, the city itself hasn't adapted to just start taking a little bit different perspective and approach at things. Mm -hmm. But I wish Councillor Bernal all the best. So in the upcoming race, it looks like we don't have candidates who have big ideas. Uh, You are mayor of Belen right now, responsible for vision, priority, making sure that the city's moving forward. What are your big ideas right now? Well, you know, just just like when I was elected, I think I think our our big ideas, my big ideas, they, they haven't they haven't changed. Uh, we had to prioritize them. You, we have to look really strongly at at, at future and growth, um, not just because we want more businesses in Berlin. How do we accommodate businesses and homes once they're here? We've got to have the infrastructure in place to accommodate what we want to see here, or we're just going to find ourselves, uh, for example, a wastewater plant. Uh, current, current capacity, 760,000 gallons a day is, is what it, it, is what it uh, currently serves, uh, has a maximum capacity of only about a million gallons. Uh, we're, we're quickly getting there, or we will be, not to mention it's two times past its usable life, so kudos to the staff that, that mm-hmm. have kept it in you know, tip-top shape all these years. Uh, but we've got to think about that. It has to be a priority because the last thing that we want is is for our residents one morning to, to flush the toilet and there's sand. Right. You know, it doesn't go anywhere. There's nowhere for it to go. Um, this is a real thing that, that, that the general public does. We, we take for granted. We flush the toilet and it goes somewhere. Um, yeah. That's because the wastewater plant works and, and we want to keep it in working condition. So it has to be a priority if we're going to look at, at growth, residential mm-hmm. and commercial. Mm-hmm. Uh, commercial growth to me, and, and I often think of things, and I, 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 get, uh, I get, I hear the good and bad about it. You know, I, I think of everything like a business, and that's a terrible thing. We're not just a business, mm-hmm. but there's a very real correlation between commercial growth and gross receipts, taxes, and what we can provide. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we can, you know, the mm-hmm. services we can provide, or how we can improve on the services we're providing. So growth is important. Um, I, I came from an area that had a lot of interstate ex- exits. You know, it was just a few miles down the interstate from a, from a major metropolitan area, very similar. And the last thing I want is for Belen to lose its character. I don't want Belen to lose its character. Right. Um, but we have so much potential to grow at our interchanges and even along Main Street without it all disrupting the, the kind of the character of downtown and that mm-hmm. small town feel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So growth is important. We want to be well, able to provide you more. Yeah, and I, I think one of the first conversations you and I had was about exactly that, you know, where you came from and how uh, a big part of the preservation of the historic cultural character of your community uh, back home was because of growth. Because mm-hmm. when you have that growth, you have the money that's supporting the community, mm-hmm. and that money is reinvested in the community in a way that allows you to preserve those historic assets that right. you have, the cultural assets. And um, I think that model is a workable model for Belen, but we have to see that growth. Right. And that growth comes like, you know, it, it is the Starbucks and the Champion mm-hmm. Express car wash. It's the, uh, the wind tower manufacturer that just came into town. Right. And, you know, I won't be shy about saying I was proud to have President Joe Biden here in town. Sure. Um, and he was celebrating the manufacturing yeah. that we're doing here in Belen. Uh, and I think that's powerful to know that, you know, the White House is talking about little old Belen mm-hmm. and, uh, and lauding us for our progress in manufacturing. 
I agree. And and I think, you know, whether the debate of whether it's happening in Berlin or your communities or Valencia County, the the great thing about our COSA, 250 jobs, well-paying jobs, mm -hmm. well above our, our average now for, for pay in this area, and $12 million, that's a $12 million injection into our local economy. Mm -hmm. uh, although our COSA is not in the city limits, we hope... Mm -hmm. Our goal, you know, we really, our fingers are crossed that, that these 250 individuals will find a home mm -hmm. in or around Belen. They'll at least be spending money in Belen, going to lunch in Belen, mm -hmm. buying gas in Belen, frequenting the, the stores in Belen, the shops along Becker Street. Uh, that's the big advantage for our COSA, for, mm -hmm. for the city of Belen. But they won't be getting a mixed drink in Belen. Won't be getting a mixed drink in Belen, not right now. Because there uh, are no bars. There are no bars. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, I, I don't... I want to know what we're doing about that, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, this is why he has to come over here and drink with us and do a podcast. It's a tough question. I wish I had a mixed drink to answer. <laughs> he doesn't have a bar anywhere else to go. have some wine on that one, though. <laughs> Thank goodness we have great wineries in Berlin and package stores. But, you know, uh, let's let's address that one head on salt yards and, and fat sats. Okay. Um, I don't know the details of that transaction or what happened there, but I do know that Salt Yard spent 15 months mm -hmm. uh, trying to make something happen in the land. And for whatever reason, I feel like it is a, I know it's a great missed opportunity for, for both the seller and the buyer, right? Uh, we still have a, a, a beautiful building there at the north end of town that... Mm -hmm you know, is, is, is serving some of a purpose, but not its full potential at all. It was a great bar when Fat Sets was there. And uh, and we have someone that is, is willing to invest in a small town um, that hasn't had the opportunity to, to complete that. So I think that's really unfortunate for everyone involved, including Belen, because there are there, there is a group. I think it would attract people from Los Lunas to come down and try out a different bar. Um, I think we have locals that would that maybe now go to a private club to get a drink that would go out publicly and you know we benefit from from those those sales. Uh, I do know that that the buyer, the entity that is was the salt yard, uh, is still looking at properties mm -hmm. in the area. Mm -hmm. So we always say fingers crossed, but again fingers crossed that they'll still give us a chance here in Berlin mm -hmm. because. Be great to have them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, great to have them. be great to have a bar. Be great to go out after work uh, bar, for an yeah. event, have a place to go for yeah. a drink, to take, you know, go out with the staff, have a business meeting. That's right. Uh, we need those things. So I, um, I come from a family of bars. Like that's our family business. So it was always really interesting because um, I am from a small town as well, right? And so a big thing happened about, I want to say like five years ago, where all the bars closed. And they thought that was the end of the town, right? Mm -hmm. Because that meant that there weren't people to support those bars and there weren't people going out. And so if the bar closes, then that's like huge for the community. What does that mean for a community? And so I kind of have a similar mindset. It says something about a community that can't go out and gather um, mm -hmm. Sunday through Wednesday, <laughs> right? Um, because, and then... Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we have our great local wineries, but but that and that we pack them, right? We pack them and the and the brew. Um, so it's kind of interesting to think about um, in terms of a community because as a community gathering place, um, what are our community? I don't want to say I don't want to use words like values or anything, but what are our community like? connectivity that we can mm -hmm. go where you could go sing karaoke and everyone loves to hear you sing, right? Where do you do that now? And so because you can't, there's a part of that that's missing in a community that I think we should just mm -hmm. pay attention to. Well, and I think anyone looking to move to an area, mm -hmm. you know, there's a large segment of, of the population that's going to say, what's, 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 there, to what's do? there to do in this yeah. town, you know, and maybe for, or that segment is, where's there to go have a drink in this yeah. town? Um, right. yeah. So it does affect a lot. It yeah. does affect a lot. Uh, you know, we we are, as a city now, trying to um, replace, find 
a replacement mm-hmm. for the gentleman who was wearing a lot of hats when, mm-hmm. when he stepped away from Parks and Rec and was just really getting into, mm-hmm. into economic development. And I have expressed the want to have someone that strictly focuses on economic development. I think, I think we're at a point now where we're just like campaigning, we've got to get creative in marketing the land. Mm-hmm. We yes. have to uh, be attending business conferences. We have to be attending these franchise mm-hmm. conferences in Vegas that they have quarterly where there are literally hundreds of business looking for somewhere to put, to set up shop. Sure. Um, we've never, I don't think, appropriately marketed ourselves or gone out mm-hmm. and, and just tried to grab it by the horns and bring it in. Right. Yeah, I think that's largely true. I mean, I know that uh, when I was mayor, going out to um, commercial developers and investors and business owners uh, outside of Belen, Los Lunas, Albuquerque, maybe further away, uh, there were a lot of folks who had a negative opinion of Belen as a small town, maybe high crime, maybe um, sometimes not um, the, uh, you know, the, the highest income level mm-hmm. that it needs to be. You know, some of those statistics are really against us in, in that sense. And so that it was very difficult um, initially to convince folks because they were almost immediately dismissive of the land mm-hmm. where they didn't see it. Um, but occasionally you would reach somebody whether it was an Ace Hardware or a tractor mm-hmm. supply or a Love's Travel Stop. And uh, they didn't have any understanding of Belen initially. You got to give them the first impression. Mm-hmm. And if you could give them that positive impression mm-hmm. right off the bat, they were more likely to come in. Uh, and so, you know, what I would always tell people, and I think it's true today, is you know, in our community, we can have the tough discussions. We can say, oh man, this mayor sucks because he closed down the last bar in the <laughs> land, uh, which isn't true, by the way. But, <laughs> you know, we can, say, we can say things like that in our community <laughs> and have these tussles and these fights. But when we get outside of the land, mm-hmm. when we go to Los Lunas or we go to Albuquerque or anywhere else, we need to be 100% behind Belen because that's the only way we flip the narrative mm-hmm. to the positive and that we can attract more of that commercial attention to our town. We can be the best advertisement or we can mm-hmm. be the worst for Belen. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and again, I think if you just, if, if I were a business looking to invest and I'm on uh, social media and I type in Belen because I want to know something about Belen and let's say I find the good stuff about the Len page or uh, the not so good stuff about the Len page. And I start, you know, doing my research just to look at posts and the community's input. Um, I don't know that I would invest in the Len. Right. Uh, that, that impression, you're so right. That impression, mm-hmm. sometimes a lack of pride, this apathy towards the Len's never, never going to change. Mm-hmm. Nothing's never going to change uh, is detrimental to, to us and growth. Absolutely. And I will say one of the, the most important things I think you've done as mayor in your first two years is push back on the negatives, the pessimism, the criticism of the land, because there have been times you put, you know, social media posts out there and you have said to the public uh, that, they, you know, let's just calm down a little bit. Let's remember we're all in this together. Correct. Mm-hmm. Correct. And, and I'll also say I've, I've, I've been there. I, I, I came here as a gentleman that right. just wanted to, mm-hmm. you know, to, to follow my dream to, to, you know, to have my own business. And I, and I chose Belen. Belen chose me. I often say, and, and here we are, um, eighteen years later. And it was tough, mm-hmm. but what I learned was the negative attitude wasn't going to get me anywhere. You know, I had this dream. I had this vision that went beyond. You know, the people in my ear that you're never going to do well, or this is never going to work, you're mm-hmm. going to fail. And I was looking to the future, and we just have to continue looking ahead mm-hmm. to the future. And, and I see great, I really see great things in, for Belen, whether that's during my term, whether it's, you know, still 40 years out. Mm-hmm. We have to always be laying the foundation to make mm-hmm. Belen better. Yeah. So we're getting more manufacturing jobs, we're getting coffee. Starbucks is coming in. Mm-hmm. We're getting maybe two automatic car washes. It sounds like definitely Champion Express is coming in. And uh, I'm, I'm curious uh, whether or not you could break any more news or is there anything else you know that's coming in? Or, you know, kind of on the flip of that, 
Now, what do you hear from people that they want to see in this town that, that isn't already coming? Well, now that Starbucks is coming in, we hear a lot of they want to see a Dutch Brothers. Okay. So Dutch Brothers, if you're watching, <laughs> you find a spot. I, 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 will, I will take it out and show you some spots. Um, you know, you'll always get that when something's coming in, we want this instead. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always the other, mm -hmm. the other crowd that... And that's that's good. That's a I think that's a positive thing to get out there. They start developing, or or putting out some competitiveness for these new large national chains that want to come in. Give them some competition. It's great. Uh, you know, I hear a lot. We want more for kids to do. Here's here's the obstacle I've run into. When when we reach out, we talk about things for kids to do. Uh, we'll never stop investing in parks because it's an asset mm -hmm. that does offer something for the community mm -hmm. to do. It's a place to have events. It's, it's a place for kids uh, to go out and do something, to be outdoors. Mm -hmm. uh, we won't quit investing in parks. I mean, it's always a big part of the budget. They're expensive to maintain, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, expensive to add to. Everything requires engineering, and, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a slow process. But we have to maintain those assets of, of our public spaces and parks. We're not, I don't think, anytime in the near future going to find something that, for example, my daughter's 14. Um, she's, she's really much into her electronic devices. Mm -hmm. uh, being considered the, the, the southernmost part of the Albuquerque metro area and having only a 25, 30 minute drive into Albuquerque, mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to have a round one or a main event yeah. or even just a Chuck E. G. show up in Berlin because as an entity, as a business, mm -hmm. when they look at feasibility studies, they draw a circle around their business and say, all of those people can easily mm -hmm. get to us. Why would we invest millions to be there when they just have to drive mm -hmm. 20, 30 minutes to get to us? I don't necessarily agree with it. I wish we could see all of those things, but mm -hmm. I don't think we will. The other thing that I'd like to see uh, when we talk about we need more for kids to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't, I used to really take that to heart. Um, today, the issue that I see is kids generally, children, let's say the, the teenage generation, 10 years old to mm -hmm. 13, 14, 15, I don't see them really wanting to be out. Mm -hmm. I don't see them wanting to be, yeah. you know, if you drive around Berlin on any day of the week, how often do you see a kid riding their bike anymore? And that's because they don't have the half pipe at the skate park. Okay, we'll talk about that too. We'll <laughs> or talk the, about the that too. splash pad. Or the splash pad. <laughs> but who needs a splash pad? We had sprinklers when we were kids. So who needs a splash pad and a sprinkler? Uh, you have um, a long memory. <laughs> <laughs> but... I don't think kids are interested in our parks. Mm -hmm. I don't. Um, and, and my response as a dad now is when someone says, my kid needs something to do, does your kid need something to do or do you need to go out with your kid and, and find mm -hmm. something to do? Because mm -hmm. if, if I allowed my, my, my daughter uh, to do it, she'd stay on electronics all day long. She'd never get out of the house and, and, and experience it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of tough. We have a generational thing and we have this curse of being the southernmost tip of the mm -hmm. Albuquerque metro area. Um, I remember over my time in Belen, a, a couple of, of uh, opportunities, a couple of folks that did try to put in arcade type businesses mm -hmm. and they were in strip malls. And I guess because of the rent or the lack of engagement, um, whatever the economics, they didn't work. And then, yeah, and I think that's really important to think, too, because mm -hmm. we had uh, two in Los Lunas. We had mm -hmm. the arcade on uh, 314 as you're going into town, didn't make it. You right. had uh, the putt-putt mini golf yeah. that they had there for a while, also didn't make it. And so you have seen local efforts, not necessarily a Belen effort, but local efforts to try to provide that support to the youth. Uh, and for whatever reason, maybe it was too expensive, maybe there's some other issue there, it just you know, it didn't work out for kids. Uh, you know, we have we have the pool. I see the pool yeah. is now yeah. not getting the use that it was even just five years ago for yeah. you. So, and it's fairly inexpensive. Mm -hmm. I think the other question that's really that we really have to look at is: Are we looking for things for kids and families to do, or are we looking for affordable things for kids and families to do? Because mm -hmm. it's very important that you know with with what families are making, the current economy, the dollars going. 
uh, much, it's not going as far as it was. Mm -hmm. What do we really need to be doing to provide? Um, community input's important. Right. More specific community and reports I actually, important. I would actually have a flip side of that. Um, and of course, with my efforts of creating an arts district in Boleyn, is that um, another way to bring money into Boleyn is to bring people into Boleyn. And to bring people into Boleyn, you have to have something for them to do and see and be a part of. Sure. Um, and it can be, you know, I've, I've been working with Main Street Partnerships, Arts and Cultural you know, districts, and we've been meeting every few months for over a few years, and that's always the main thing to me is, yes, so there's there's aspects of a city as, like, a mayor that you have. That's what the kids do. They, 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 drive. Just, they drive around. <laughs> yeah, we have music and she, she we have um, So you have, like, in economics, so you have those struggles, but then you also have, like, okay, not everyone is dying to come to Boleyn, but actually Boleyn does have something to offer people. Mm -hmm. And so when we start thinking about what does Boleyn have to offer, mm -hmm. the fact of the fact, the fact is, is that we're not Las Lunas, so we don't have all the corporations. We're not Albuquerque with all the corporations, so we're kind of like a little hidden gym. And within a little hidden gym, you can create something really great and you can create a destination. And we have the anchors of a destination. We mm -hmm. just need the support. And I think um, this is a project I know I've been working on, Jara's been working on, um, but I feel like, and you're very supportive of it, but I'm starting to see like the town supporting it more and more and more in a way that's great because they see that it actually is an event for all ages, right? It's actually an event um, for people outside of Bullen to come and experience and say, oh my gosh, you actually have three wineries or you actually have an, a bug lights or and, uh, you have a bookstore that should be in Baltimore or something like that. So I think, you know, we focus a lot on what Boleyn doesn't have a lot right. of the time, but there are so many precious things that Boleyn has. Right. And um, well, and I, I think that's right, because like you're talking about, there's a lot of technology out there. Mm -hmm. Folks get kind of lost in, you know, the binge watching yeah. mm -hmm. or yeah. the video games or whatever it is, you know, they put on their headsets and they're <laughs> doing their 3D world stuff. Yeah. Um, and then you have, uh, you know, on, on the other side, I think folks are, they, they kind of, they want to get away from it. You know, the, the whole unplug movement, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And I think the future of economies is going to be largely built around experiences. Mm -hmm. And experiences is food and drink and entertainment and maybe art and beauty and sports. All these things that allow you to interact in a way that you can't get out of the mm -hmm. technology. Right. Yeah. Right. I was in... in uh, early this year, took a trip to Las Vegas, and it was the first time in the many trips I've taken to Las Vegas that I actually went downtown to Fremont Street. Mm. And I said, as I was on Fremont Street, oh my gosh, why don't we have a zip line from one end of Becker Street to the other? <laughs> so really, it's a matter of how creative are we willing to get, how much is it going to cost, what's yeah. the liability, let's think about that in, in today's world. Um, and, and, you know, one thing the city, the city manager and I just had a conversation about last week was we're going to continue as, as we kind of get into this more economic development and finding the perfect person to go out and pitch Belen. Becker Street's going to be a big part of that pitch. We're the only municipality in Valencia County mm -hmm. that has a downtown area, yes. a historic downtown area. It's huge. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't understand why a vacant building on, on Becker Street um, Exists. Why the community? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, why the community yeah. would be upset? Yeah. Should someone like, um, I don't know, you know, Sweet Frog or one of the other frozen yogurt or ice cream, mm -hmm. you know, Cold Stone decide to put up a, mm -hmm. you know, I don't understand why they're empty. I don't understand why they're empty. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, and I don't understand the the this contention about Becker Street that that it's all there is to the land. Certainly not all there is to the land, but it is a very important part that we need to be capitalizing sure. on for the future and the yes. growth of the land because Absolutely. it's always that diamond in the rough for this county. Well, and, yeah. you know, when I was mayor, it was about identifying your business node. You know, mm -hmm. maybe it was downtown, mm -hmm. Becker Avenue, the heart of the as Ronnie Torres had dubbed it. Uh, but then it's also the fairgrounds mm -hmm. and the activity around agriculture and mm -hmm. the fairgrounds. And then right. it's also your interstate and your mm -hmm. Camino de Llano and your North Berlin Interchange and your South Berlin Interchange and what activity is possible around those. But then you have other areas, right? If you come down Camino de Llano just a little bit from the interstate, 
You've got a lot of medical practices. Sure. Yes. Maybe there should be more. Maybe there should be a hospital there. Mm -hmm. So you have these nodes of activity uh, where business is already located. And I think regardless of what, you know, a lot of folks would criticize me and say I was only interested in the arts district. Not true. I was interested in putting the hospital on Camino de Llano mm -hmm. next to all of the other medical facilities. I was interested in seeing the Valencia County uh, Fairgrounds there grow as as large as it possibly could you know there's always a lot of complication private owned versus public property yeah. and how much can you do there but we started to see you brought tractor supply in right across the street right and all of a sudden mm -hmm. it's catering to that agricultural environment and so i think if you can recognize the power of those nodes and speak to them mm -hmm. not only in your community but outside of it you can attract attention to it mm -hmm. right. that brings it right. to development Right. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe Camino del Llano, maybe that would be medical mile, whatever we decide to call it. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Anything I, is growth. And I know that there are uh, three Sanchez brothers who have dedicated their education mm -hmm. to come back and be on that medical mile um, in Belen and support that, that vision. So you see people within that community. So we always get caught up in the negative, right? Or the old versus the new, but there's a whole generation who have left Berlin, come mm -hmm. back to Berlin, or who came to Berlin in the first place and said, I'm investing my time, money, and energy in this community, let's make it better. And here's the, to be devil's advocate for a moment on that, because mm -hmm. um, the Sanchez's are all big, gosh, what an investment they've mm -hmm. made, you know, in their education and coming back. The question that becomes is, is Berlin ready if someone were to come and place a medical mm -hmm. practice on, on Camino del Llano, is, would Belen embrace it? Mm -hmm. Would it succeed? Are we, are we there yet as a town to accept the outside entities, outside businesses? And I guess, for the, you know, not that we've had McDonald's, we've had other franchise restaurants. Mm -hmm. Starbucks would be a great test to mm -hmm. where are we? Because we do have mom and pop coffee places. Yeah. And I'll tell you, you know, when I was mayor, uh, it didn't matter what commercial proposal we put forward, there was always a protest of it. But what I told folks every single time is we are doing this, we are getting it done. We're bringing in Love's Travel Stop. I don't care if there are other gas stations mm -hmm. in town because business leads to more business yes. because it attracts more customers, especially when you have them all located on the medical mile. When you have that branding mm -hmm. and that location, they can go to that medical mile to not only get dentistry and medical and animal practice, they can get physical therapy, mm -hmm. they can have a nursing home mm -hmm. and, and rehabilitation mm -hmm. center. You have it all in one area. Can you imagine if you had a hospital too? Yeah. Sure. And I think that um, a, a good, uh, <laughs> I think a good rule of thumb is I don't wait for people to be ready for me, right? Okay. Is that you have to push forward because no one, people are never ready. Um, people are never accepting of change, mm -hmm. um, but change has to happen for growth. Mm -hmm. And I think um, that's something that gets Belen stuck is, is this, is it, it's like this negative, 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 negative. And if you keep pushing forward, eventually they'll either shut up mm -hmm. or they won't. But the point right, of the fact that they're going. not shutting right. up means it's nothing about you because they're not right. going to shut up for the next person either. Right. And so I think um, for progress, and that's something that I, who have been such a strong advocate of, of progress in Berlin, um, regardless, is you have to at some point say, I'm not doing this for to appease anyone, but I'm doing this for the betterment of Berlin. Right. And I think you can even add that even a little further and say, um, you know, there's a there's a part of Berlin right now with Bombita Farms who are really working with farmers to become this, you know, organic agricultural mm -hmm. shopping center. And so you have these pockets everywhere of people invested in Berlin. And you don't always hear about them. Mm -hmm. Because loud squeaky wheels <laughs> and sometimes mm -hmm. lost dogs mm -hmm. uh, get the better <laughs> end of social media. Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> You know, it's not on the list um, to talk about, but but I think we ought to visit a little bit about the hospital because mm -hmm. um, it's one of those hot button topics. Where's our mm -hmm. hospital? Where's our? You've heard it. Uh, I, I, I've heard it since like 2006. Here we are. <laughs> I've heard it since, yeah, I've heard it since I moved to 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 Valencia County. Uh, you know the facts are 
obviously it's in the hands of the county commission. It's in the hands of the county commission because mm -hmm. Belen and Los Lunas couldn't play nice mm -hmm. in the sandbox always about where it should be. Mm -hmm. And uh, to save everyone probably what we thought was a lot of time, which it's not really saved a lot of time, but mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of time and energy with the legalities of, of that. Um, county commission's handling it. Mm -hmm. So I will say because you know this isn't this isn't secretive. Um, last year the the company um, Community Health Corp out of Texas did come to Belen and they did go to visit the site on Christopher Road and I went with them mm -hmm. and the former city manager and we stood there and we looked at this this acreage on Christopher yeah. Road and I just didn't um, I didn't get the impression that they were impressed. Whether it was because the weeds had been, whatever it was, whatever, <laughs> it's an empty lot. It's in an there was nothing pretty to look at. It's nothing pretty to look at on an empty lot. And just there waiting for something great to happen, right? Uh, I just didn't get the feeling that that they saw it there. And so on a whim, again, unscripted, unrehearsed, I, I said to the gentleman, can I show you some other properties? And we went to the North Interchange. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just basically, near tractor supply pointed north and said guys all this property mm -hmm. either side of of this frontage road mm -hmm. is available right. and it's right by the freeway mm -hmm. and we don't know it has been very tight lift of, of where the hospital will go because the rfp states the commission picked the provider mm -hmm. the provider picks the location mm -hmm. what i will say that i know and that i uh, have thought about um, the RFP states that the hospital must be located within five minutes of the interstate. Mm -hmm. The question I asked of a county commissioner was five minutes from the interstate at what time of day? <laughs> yeah. Because I think that's a legitimate concern. Yes. If I'm having a major medical episode and there is a hospital tucked in somewhere behind a movie theater on that side of the freeway in Los Lunas, just take me to Albuquerque. Yeah. You know, either way I could die, you know, on the way there, on the way to get, <laughs> that's just the yeah. truth. Sure. Um, yeah. Um, so five minutes at what time of day? I, mm -hmm. I think I would love, I would love to see the hospital mm -hmm. in Belen. Um, many would love to see it in Los Lunas. I think this is going to be, depending on who you're asking, right? We're going to have our opinions, mm -hmm. but, uh, but in Belen it could serve, um, all of that space between Belen and Socorro, mm -hmm. you've got Mountain Air, you've got all these areas that, you know, in real communities that I don't think were appropriately accounted for mm -hmm. in the feasibility study. Um, but it is up to the provider now yeah. to select. And, and, and I have maintained email communication, mm -hmm. but in total transparency, it has been limited, limited to, thanks again for reaching out, Mayor, mm -hmm. we haven't made a decision. Mm -hmm. right. So at this point, uh, you know, okay. Yeah, I think yeah. we've done what we can. Uh, why do we want a hospital? Because number one, it's important to have health care mm -hmm. for growth as people are looking at a community. Because we want fewer people to die so and they don't yes. need your services. <laughs> I, did a, I, did a, I did a Facebook post that almost went viral a few years back that said, Welcome to Valencia County. Please drive safely. We have three funeral homes, but no hospital. Yeah. <laughs> True statement. Yeah. <laughs> so let's hope it'll be resolved. Uh, it, it is up to the provider to select the location. Yeah. Well, I really uh, appreciate you, you know, coming in today and talking to us. And I, I wanted to spend just, you know, a few more minutes giving you an opportunity to, um, you know, tell the public whatever you feel that the public needs to know, uh, you know, to tell Meg and I anything we need <laughs> to know, to, to give us, a, you know, a little bit of kind of a closing perspective, mm -hmm. if you will, about uh, where we are in Belen and, and you know, where we're headed and, and uh, what we can expect from your administration. Well, you know, there, there's nothing negative to say to, to you and Megan. Um, no. <laughs> How sweet. I, I, I don't know. I'll wait for your next episode. <laughs> We'll see call the next in. episode. Yeah, so follow up after the post. Um, you know what? What can be expected? There, there are projects right now. For example, major major paving projects coming to fruition, or ones that just were completed after a long long time. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna claim that uh, I'm not gonna claim that I did it. Mm -hmm. Everything started under your tenure, maybe even prior with, with uh, La Luz and San Lorenzo and Delgado and. West Didier was just completed last week. Mm -hmm. uh, the 
West Outer Gone project goes out to bid on the 19th. That's a big one with infrastructure, sewer and water. Um, just received grant funding for paving from on 3rd Street from Rankin all the way to Bernard. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's important. So yes, and, and then we continue the little patching paving projects all over. Uh, what else can we expect? You know, we have three vacancies currently in the police department. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hear a lot about, about crime. I, I, I brought some statistics today, but we're not gonna delve into everything in detail. Um, crime, crime, I think there are so many facets that affect crime, mm -hmm. and many of those are much above the nonpartisan city government level mm -hmm. uh, to talk about what, what can affect crime rates. Mm -hmm. What I do know is that uh, I have confidence in our police department. We have three positions open. Mm -hmm. I remember a time when, when we were putting in a new police chief and I was on your council and you were the mayor, and I think we had half of a police department or close mm -hmm. to it, and that was tough. It was scary. And so we have continued to, to grow in the police department or fill positions that have been vacant. Uh, we just received uh, last night's council meeting, law enforcement, law enforcement um, recruitment fund, the governor's office, okay. mm -hmm. uh, 300 and some odd thousand. It's enough for two more full positions. So right. we, we have actually five more positions for our police department. Uh, You'll continue to see investment in in parks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'll continue to see investment in pushing for development at the North Interchange mm -hmm. because whether or not a hospital goes there, there's a lot of potential there mm -hmm. that can that can help Belen grow. Mm -hmm. awesome. And maybe you'll see a bar. I, I, I hope you guys can <laughs> I hope I get a drink. A at least maybe one we can bar. Do our next episode, <laughs> a, a, bar. a new bar in Belen. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, what do you have for me? I want a closer. You want a closer? Oh, what do you have for him? Um, I have, uh, I don't, what do you have for him? What do I have for I you? I know Jared's got well, something. Well, no, oh, I've got, <laughs> got something. I've got endless things. I've got, you know, me. Um, critique, I, a critique I've of a mirror. I've never, oh, you want a critique of a mirror? Oh, yeah. Oh, I really, yeah. I, you know, I appreciate it. Okay. I'm ugly, I really do. Critique. Um, well, I will say, like, again, you know, we kind of started the conversation talking about how you've been in office a couple of years. And, you know, I, I probably softened it a little by, you know, explaining there is a learning curve and there, mm -hmm. there genuinely sure. is a learning curve. Okay. Um, and a lot of folks think, well, if you're in government and you're a city councilor and you come in um, as mayor, you should know what you're doing. But they're completely different positions. And so I feel like uh, the first year was kind of rough. And, and I, I think you'd agree with um, some of that because you, you had some personnel changes. Uh, maybe uh, you were kind of getting familiar with some of the projects and programs that you had not yet been familiar with or you hadn't engaged with as much as a counselor that you now had to as mayor. And so uh, it was a little slower moving than uh, what uh, at least I was used to uh, and maybe some members of the public were used to um, because you go from a two-term mayor who'd been there eight years mm -hmm. and for the most part, knows everything about everything uh, to somebody coming in who's fresh and has to learn a lot of that stuff. Right. And so I think the first year was rough, but I will say, I think that the, the second year has gone a lot better so far. Um, mm -hmm. And I can remember a time, and I'm sure Clara wasn't too happy about it, but um, where it was late in your first year there, uh, and every single week in the newspaper, negative headline, negative banner headline about the city of Belen, about things you were doing, the city was doing, and it, it started to ruffle me because, you know, that I think what I what I put out there on Hub City News is, you know, that it's the Valencia County News Bulletin. It's not the Belen News Bulletin. Mm -hmm. And trust me, Belen isn't the only one that's having a problem. Mm -hmm. There are problems all over this county and they all sure. deserve to be covered. And, and, and so um, I put that out there because uh, I was tired of hearing the negative about um, all these, you know, banner headlines, all these things going on. And, and I think that that was sort of uh, a point at which we were able to, to sort of transition to your second year there. And, and you were able to, you, I think you kind of recognize that too, that maybe we needed to change the tenor of the conversation and we needed mm -hmm. to uh, get more information out to the public. And I noticed at that point, like things sort of started to step up. You were communicating with the public in, in a more active way, but a different way 
uh, including leveraging the tools and resources of the city of Berlin to do that. And I thought that was very helpful because you know, ultimately the public wants to hear from you. Mm -hmm. And I know that it can be difficult sometimes, like you're saying, to uh, get on social media, answer questions, to sit down and have these conversations <laughs> where, you know, coming into it, you may not know what to expect. And, you know, it, it could go the wrong way because we could come in and we could be ready to fight um, instead of- I was a little ready to fight and then I don't know. <laughs> there was no I thought we had very <laughs> I'm very disappointed. I thought we had a very pleasant conversation. <laughs> yeah, but, absolutely. But absolutely. you know what I mean? Like, I think that, that sometimes as a, a political figure, as a public figure, you get a little hesitant. Mm -hmm. um, and I could see that in your first year where you're kind of filling things out. And then I think you kind of came in a little stronger in the mm -hmm. second year. And so I, I like where you are as a mayor in year two. And I feel like you have the ability now having the knowledge of the projects and programs, having a handle on staffing. You know, you are in year two creating the staff that you want. You're not just relying on my staff. You're creating the vision that you want, not just relying on my vision. You're building the projects and programs that you want, not just waiting for my money to mature so that you can use my money and get those projects going. Now there's probably some that's still lagging, but you know, for the most part, the city is becoming your city. Uh, and I think that's really powerful. And I think, you know, in this end of year two, start of year three, seize the moment because you have the next two years to leverage all that you've learned, all that you have uh, begun to build to really see the fruit of that labor. Uh, and it's coming if you want it. And so I would encourage that. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. I got no fight. <laughs> I've, been, I've been trying to come up with a fight and then I, was like, I was like I'll just call you later and we'll fight <laughs> I, want, I, I feel you know in closing this out I enjoyed this thanks yeah. for the firebox yeah um, I, I think it's important for the public to know that, that I am available mm -hmm. I am accessible and I'm approachable yeah. and, and ultimately all of us yeah. all of us that, that participate in today and will participate in the future mm -hmm. want simply the best for each of you. So yeah, let us sure. know what that is. And and uh, there's something out there that's not so good. You know, I mm -hmm. I probably won't pin it down on social media finding it, you know, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. reach out to me because we are glad to address it. Yeah. And I think um, I think it's always good for people to see that like what really matters is conversation and that people need to communicate. Right. Um, and right. that you can put a nasty little thing on Facebook and leave it there. Um, and then there, that's the presumption, that's like how everyone perceives how it is in real life, but that's just, that's not what it is. No. And so I mm -hmm. think, um, what's made us and, you know, including Danny and including other people very passionate about Berlin and able to communicate and, and, and have conversations that are sometimes heated, but always coming back to the same situation of there's a mutual respect for each other. So when you respect people, you feel comfortable telling them how you feel and what they're doing. And I think um, that is the really the root of all success is respecting each other. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think um, that's how we move forward is with respect. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you again for joining us. We appreciate yes. you. Thank you. Sitting in the hot seat and, yeah. uh, you know, here in the firebox and, and letting us ask you the yeah. tough questions totally. and answering them. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, you'll join us again sometime in the future. Yeah. Sure. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. Good night. <laughs> All right. <laughs>